recording. Let's give another minute. Kyle, do we have all the players? Yes, ma'am. Got all commissioners and the town clerk. I just got to uh, text Mr. Morgan, and uh, I think we're set to go. Okay. Well, I'm sure Mr. Morgan will be joining us shortly, so I will at least open. He will surely be here for the treasurer's report. Okay. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the town meeting for the town of Upper Marlboro. It's our regular town meeting. It is March 9th, 2021. I believe it's 702. Correct. And may I have a, a roll call, please? Sure, Mayor. President Linda Penoyer. Present. Commissioner Sarah Franklin. Here. Commissioner Janice Duckett. Present. Dave Williams, town clerk, all present. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Before I ask for the consent to the agenda, I will be taking one item off the agenda. We are moving item three, which is the resolution 202107 PAMC support, which was due for a board vote. We have some language uh, that has to be revised and uh, I'm moving this for a discussion item at the next work session. So with that in mind, do I have consent to the agenda? Yes, I consent to the agenda. Thank you. Okay, I am asking for approval of the a motion to approve the February 9th, 2021 public hearing meet minutes and the February 9th, 2021 regular town meeting minutes, the February 23rd, 2021 board work session minutes and the finance finance report and approval of the treasurer's report as of February 28th, 21. I motion we approve meeting minutes and financial reports for the month of February, 2021. You have a second? Second. Thank you. Uh -huh. All approving? Aye. 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 All eyes are noted. Can I get a better pin? Okay. Uh, moving forward. We will start with Greenwell Consulting Group report. And we have, I saw Tia. Yes, and I, I should have changed my and name. There we go again. <laughs> Jacob Masquerade. I should be is Jacob Tia. now. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, good, good evening. It's good to see everyone. Uh, we're officially halfway through session, uh, 45 days. So I just wanted to give some quick you know, legislative updates for the state in general um, and also for the town. So one of the biggest topics this year is of course, police reform and leadership has really made it one of their top priorities, both in the house uh, and the Senate. Um, and last week, the Senate finished their you know, weeks of deliberation uh, and 
in their hearings on a reform package. So the package contains nine bills, uh, the biggest of which and sort of most controversial both in, in Annapolis and in the media has been uh, one that would repeal the law enforcement officer's bill of rights and another which would allow citizens to uh, review sort of the, the internal affairs records of, of ongoing and past uh, um, cases with police officers. Um, sports betting is another major topic. Uh, the, the gaming subcommittee passed out the sports betting bill last week uh, with a handful of amendments that expand the number of mobile licenses and retail licenses. So there should be about 15 mobile sports betting apps total come next year um, or at the end of this year and about another 15 to 20 in-person betting facilities. Uh, like I said, like I said last month, the closest one to the town would most likely be the um, uh, the Washington football team stadium um, and then MGM uh, casino would be the other one. So that that bill is now going to the full house floor uh, this week and they'll take a vote and then it'll be off to the Senate. Um, for the town, we had Commissioner Franklin testify on House Bill 619 last week, which was, which was great. It was very well received. Um, our team has been working with Delegate Harrison for about 18 months now on this bill, which would allow for the town to implement speed cameras um, as a safety precaution on your, you know, very heavily trafficked residential streets. Uh, so we were excited to see that the hearing went well and the bill is moving forward this year. Um, there's also finally been some movement on the federal stimulus package. While it's still uncertain what exactly the qualifications are or if there are any at all similar to the CARES uh, Act from last year, um, right now the town is slated to receive about $150,000 in relief funding. Uh, the numbers are subject to change, but um, the bill passed out of the Senate last week and just needs to make it out of the House one more time. Uh, before President Biden can sign it. Both in the House and the Senate, there hasn't been any pushback for the municipalities and the counties receiving funds, uh, which is good because there was some um, a couple months ago when we had a different president, but uh, there hasn't been anyone trying to sort of remove the, the direct payments to the municipalities. So uh, it looks like the one $150,000 should be coming to the town um, this year, which is great. And that's that's all I have for this month. And if there's any questions, I'm happy to take them. Uh, Jacob, can you clarify what the funding is supposed to be used for? I know the last round of stimulus, uh, there are certain criteria, but I guess this one's just general lost revenue, correct? That's that's what it seems like. So I was talking with Nan Mann and she's, um. Uh, she's with Chris Van Hollen's office, Senator Hollen, Van Hollen's office, and she was going to get back to me on what exactly the specifics were. She seemed to think that it, the qualifications would be completely different from the CARES Act and it would be far more open if there were any qualifications at all. Um, before I go on, you know, any record saying that specifically, <laughs> um, that is what I'm currently being led to believe. And, you know, what I'm also sort of hopeful for because that gives the town um, and the county as well a lot more flexibility with uh, how they want to spend this money and how they and how you guys sort of see your recovery as in you know as it pertains to you all absolutely thank you and um just for the public i think that we're kind of have it on the board's agenda to talk about that at the next work session um let's, we should have a bit more details but so far it looks like it's gonna go and replace the uh, lost parking meter revenue. Um, we missed because of the courthouse being closed for the past year. So thanks okay. Jacob, that's all I have. Kyle, will we talk about it? Sorry, will we talk about it um, at the budget meeting uh, next Tuesday at 11? Um, we could do either. I think uh, we we're just waiting to hear the specifics on yeah. um, Obviously, what, exactly. Yeah. I didn't, we, I didn't yeah. wanna try and put it up <laughs> there and then the, the bill falls through. <laughs> so uh, we're not counting any chickens. Okay. Totally hatch, but uh, yeah, when, whenever um, Greenwell and Jacob and all them are able to get us some details, we can definitely bring them before the board, um, invite Greenwell up and talk at one of the budget work sessions or the next March work session, however it works. So. Thanks, guys. Absolutely.
Okay, anyone else have any questions for Jacob? Hearing none, Jacob, as always, thank you for your sage advice and, and keeping us informed as to what's going on there and that is one of the job you do. All right, and thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Okay, our next is up will be public safety, Chief Burris. Uh, good evening. Good evening, everybody. I uh, hope everybody is doing well. Um, for the month of February, uh, you'll see that we had um, 10 disorderly report calls, uh, one business alarm, uh, two accidents. Uh, we had a child custody um, call, one check on the welfare, vandalism, family dispute, and a uh, suspicious person, uh, one fight call, and an unknown trouble. Um, the disorderly reports are kind of high for February, but a couple of those were repeat calls at one to three addresses. You know, somebody called, and then 30 minutes later, somebody else called. So it's not 10 independent incidents. It's generally two or three at one house. Um, so everybody knows that. Um, still had all of our uh, monthly meetings with the Prince George's Chiefs, the Maryland State Police, um, the Maryland Chiefs, those monthly calls and um, Zoom meetings that we have are still ongoing. Obviously, myself and the officers are patrolling the town, answering any calls for service and helping out the residents and anything that they need. Um, last month, we assisted the Board of Education. They had a staff um, package giveaway that they wanted to give all of the teachers. So they did that for two different days. So we assisted with traffic and helping them get the people in and out um, to make sure that everything was smooth and there was no traffic backups on uh, school lane and actually out on um, school in Old Crane when they were going out the other direction. Um, myself and uh, Town Administrator Snyder, we participated in the IPS, which is our parking vendor. Um, company just trying to get all of those things tightened up to make sure that when they come on board, we have everything that we need and making sure that we have all of our equipment and all those things ready to go once the, um, you know, the paperwork is done and they're on board fully. Uh, myself and uh, Town Administrator Snyder, again, we participate in an MML sponsor tabletop exercise um, dealing with leadership, doing a community division and civil unrest. It was, um, I think it was four hours, something like that, um, where we had to work with other individuals across the state of Maryland. There were other police chiefs, there were mayors, there were town counselors. Um, it was a very good exercise. Um, caused you to think on your feet. You know, we had a, a mock civil disturbance with, you know, Everything from protesting to the mayor's internet's uh, conference call went down, and you know it was just like a, a real life catastrophe, and you had to handle it. So that was a good, good um, training. So also, I participated in the District Two Coffee Club. They started that back up. Um, they don't have anything new. Just talking about the things that they generally talk about each year. I mean, each month. Um, and then also we received some mass donations from the Prince George's County Office of Community Relations. Um, they were gracious enough to give us um, some more uh, masks and um, face shields. So that's pretty much it for the month of February. If anybody has any questions, I'm willing to answer. Hi, hi Chief Burt, this is Patty. Um, so I tried calling the non-emergency number and that non-emergency number, um, they go through a diatribe and it takes forever to get to actual report. Um, and then it actually tells you if you're calling for a municipality to call your municipality. Um, that's the first I've heard of that. And I don't know why they would tell you that because they know that most municipalities don't have 24 hour a day coverage. Um, so I'm not sure that's the first time I've heard of that, but you still should call them because most of the municipalities are dispatched through Prince George's County. Um, Nick, it could have been if it was, did they say anything about a non-police related call to call your municipality? 
Well, well, it's their it's their recording. Their recording tells you, you know, if it's an non if it's an emergency, dial nine one one. It's a non emergency, and it goes through all of this, all of these steps that you can you can do, and it takes a really long time. But it finally says if you know if if it's a non emergency, I should call my municipality. And this was during the day. First, I've heard of it. So I would say, and I'll tell anybody on the call, stay on the line and tell them what your issue is. Because either way, they still have to dispatch the officers, whether they're Upper Marlboro or whatever municipality, they still have to dispatch it through their system because most agencies don't have their own self-dispatch. That's the only, that's only the larger municipalities who can actually do that. So I'm, I'm not sure, I'll have to ask, but yeah, I would say still call. I, I just recommend you listen to, just call the, the non-emergency number and listen to it because it is really long and bloated. And honestly, by the time I was still on the phone with them, um, one of your police officers was on um, uh, service lane and I was able to walk down and talk to them from my upstairs and I was still on the phone with a non-emergency number. So it's really a, really a long conversation, but it did tell me to call my municipality. And do we have a number to call our municipality for a, a non-emergency? Or do I just call the town hall and ask them to do something? I mean, what is, what is that process during the day since we do have police during the day? You still need to call the non-emergency number because we don't self-dispatch or we don't dispatch from the station. And that's the reason why the non-emergency number is there because most municipalities can't dispatch from their station. So you would call here and I would tell you, if I answered the phone, I would tell you to call the non-emergency number and the town staff would tell you the same thing because we don't dispatch police officers from the town. We never have and we never will because that's not, that's, you know, to do something like that is probably $5 million to get your own station up and running for something like that because you have your like, own dispatching. So we don't like do Laurel that. and Bowie do that, right? Yes. So that they're probably the only two, but they probably- Laurel, Bowie, Greenbelt, and- oh, yeah. um, Hidesville. Hidesville. Those are the only ones that do it in Bladesburg. So I, I think maybe their recording is, if you don't live in one of those municipalities, you have to ignore it kind of. Because it, probably they have so many people that they're just trying to get those people to call. Well, um, I just thought Chief would give me his phone and I just call him anytime <laughs> I need something, right? <laughs> Residents can also call, just call 911 if they have any issues with the non emergency number, correct, Chief? I mean, it goes to the same building. Yeah, they're all in the same building, just sitting on opposite sides of the building. But again, you can call 911 or 301 352 1200. That's the easiest way. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Chief Burroughs? Thank you, Chief. And we will move on to public works. Mr. Bond. All right, good evening, everyone. Hopefully, everyone is well. Um, for the month of February, I obtained uh, a few verbal quotes to replace and overhaul the large in-bed salt spreader as um, the end of January and the beginning of February, those storms wrapped up. It sort of had quite a bit of issues after being fixed. Um, we had private contractors begin install of utilities on the Valerio property downtown. We also have Verizon contractors install a taller telephone pole at Marlboro Liquors in preparation for the 5G cell tower pack. <clears throat> the maintenance and beautification, public works crews retrench the French drain around public works yard. Maintenance, we perform maintenance and deep cleaning of all winter weather equipment before it was dismounted from the vehicles. Um, once again, we uh, focus on things that uh, broken over the last few storms, headlight replacement, hinge pins, couplers, things like that that are easily worn out. Public works vehicles were pressure washed and degreased to remove salt and road grime and routine fixing and replacement of meter heads was also completed. 
We had WSSC contractors replace water lines along Water Street. Also, uh, Granite Inliner, a contractor for WSSC, began pipelining along Church Street in 725. For weather related, of course, we had multiple winter weather events uh, that resulted in quite a bit of plowing, plowing, snow pushback, and spot treating. These treatments resulted in usage of more than half of our salt reserves that we saved from uh, last year. So going into the winter months uh, this year, we will need to replenish that. For refuse accumulations, things going to the landfill for the month of February, bulk was sort of, uh, it, it's actually been the slowest I've ever seen it. Um, it was 1.18 tons. And for yard waste, it was zero tons. Yard waste was, uh, for the majority, collected. And, so, and a lot of it was actually mixed trash. So we sent those uh, items to the landfill as well. It's the only reason why yard waste is at zero. Um, also, bulk was light. And we were able to hold back on multiple trips to the dump. And leftover accruals for February were dumped uh, the beginning of this month. So you will actually see that reflect uh, on next month's status report. And we had zero dump body rentals for the month. Right. Are there any questions, comments, or concerns? Hi, this is Patty. Darnall, your, your, your group did an excellent job of cleaning up that snow. You, it, it was so amazing to, to, to wake up and see the roads totally clear when I knew other places were, we could get out of town but couldn't go anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you guys did an excellent job. Um, I wanted to ask, though, um, do, are you... Are you all responsible for sidewalks or are the owners responsible for the sidewalks? Um, I believe according to our charter, um, the actual businesses and homeowners are um, responsible for uh, the area right in front of their uh, property. However, yes. um, as far as 725 um, Elm Street and things of that nature, we tend to uh, take care of the longer stretches. And uh, the town did send, we had a couple of complaints and uh, sent some letters to some of the businesses, um, at least on Main Street, um, who uh, didn't shovel in front. We got some complaints. So we, um, the code enforcement did send a few letter warning letters to them. Obviously now it's warm, so it doesn't matter, but that's something we're going to kind of emphasize on next year um, and push through. But it is the response, technically the responsibility of the uh, the person who has who owns the property adjacent to the sidewalk because I know Trinity also had some issues clearing uh, yeah, their section of the sidewalk as well so that but I know they're going through a rough patch right now so we didn't want to engage them too much um, but I that's that's so. something we've been keeping an eye on we got pictures of everything and proof um, because we did get some complaints so I just want to put that out there too all right thank you and thank you for the compliment I'll pass those kudos along to the team um, I have a question about having to, I, this is maybe Kyle and you about having to throw out all that yard waste. Uh, um, can we kind of do something to remind our residents um, or is it like you could leave it rather than pick it up or you don't know until it's already in the vehicle? Does that make sense? Um, for the most part, um, what we tend to see is We'll see people throw um, plastic bags at the bottom of a yard waste bag. And as we throw it onto the truck, we'll actually, it'll, it'll burst open and we'll actually see it. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. We are uh, in the next landings issue, the section on public works is yard waste disposal. Um, okay. And I know I'm going to be working with Darnell. We're going to revamp kind of our refuse notices and kind of work with code enforcement on that as well so that we can tag stuff and leave it if, if it's not in compliance um but that that's something we're looking to pick up over the summer and really push hard yes and to answer the other side of that if we do notice it beforehand it is left and tagged yeah and i guess if there's like if you guys are like oh this house always has trash bags in it like is there a way we can do anything about that kyle 
So we're, um, that's one of the next uh, ordinances we're looking to pick up right first thing in the summer is a refuse collection ordinance um, where we can kind of outline those. Right now it's kind of a mix of a couple of older ordinances, um, mm -hmm. but that's something that I've kind of put on the agenda to really push in like and set like some fines. Hopefully, well, first, of course, it's trying to work with them and educate, yeah. but then yeah. on the back end, if they keep putting stuff out that's not supposed to mixing hazardous waste and we've left them some notices, have the opportunity for some um, fines and corrective actions at that point. Um, but so we have some stuff we can go off, but I think it can be stronger and clearer um, legislation. Okay. And I uh, interject, I think uh, we, has it been a while since we put out um, direct, um, directions or whatever you want to call it on electronic disposal of, I mean, disposal of electronics, recycling them, as opposed to just putting TVs out. I don't know if you've noticed an uptick in that, Darnell, or? I, I have seen a small uptick and um, quite a few people actually asking. Um, if I have the older notices in my truck, I will uh, actually leave those um, as the tag um, for the things, for the items that we do leave, or if someone asks where we can dispose of them. Um, I actually talked to Kyle, I'm pretty sure it was sometime last year, maybe in the future of us doing an actual electronics disposal day where um, residents will uh, bring their stuff to us and we will have the truck reserved specifically for that purpose. But that is something we would also have to work out with the county. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions for Mr. Bond? Thank you again, Darnell. And we will go on to the finance in Mr. Morgan. Good evening. Good evening, Board of Commissioners. Um, so for the month of uh, February, we've seen uh, continued uh, positives within our um, revenue. This uh, in the month of uh, sorry in the month of February, uh, we received fourth quarter uh, monies from Verizon and Comcast for their franchise fees as well. Uh, we of course only seen about seventy five hundred dollars come in for parking meter monies. Uh, over past years, we've we start to see some increases around this time as the the weather breaks and uh, we start to see some more spring weather. Um, however, we don't know how that position will still work uh, with some of the things that's going on with a lot of of course, Zoom or virtual meetings going on, but we'll try to continue, continuously to track that. Um, we also have some sizable deposits and taxes as well. Uh, and again, that's an area that we'll probably start to see a decline uh, with as we get to the, as we're near the latter stages of this fiscal year. Um, I think we'll probably see a sizable one in the month of June, possibly right before the fiscal year uh, turns over. Um, and I know we will not see a earned income tax uh, payment for the month of April uh, every year. Uh, our fiscal year, December and April are months that we don't receive earned income taxes. And that's an area that we've been, uh, we've done pretty well uh, this uh, fiscal year, actually more than we've anticipated as well. On the expense side, uh, the town has paid its normal expenses towards uh, consultants and contractors, uh, its operating needs, such as legal fees and salaries and things like that. Um, we, and that's very similar or similar to the uh, public safety and public works area. On one area, well, I will break out um, as we get out of that winter stage or whatnot. I'll make sure that I try to start uh, letting individuals know of the overtime in that area. Um, as Darnell had mentioned, his guys did a, uh, a great job with the, the snow that we've seen over this, uh, this uh, I guess, calendar year. Um, but in our returns fiscal year, and uh, there was some overtime for the month of February as well. So that's something that I'll uh, make note of as we move forward, um, just in case individuals want to know how much that they're patrolling or the public would like to know how much they're patrolling after hours and for public works, how much work that they're doing after hours when we have these uh, weather events as well. Um, as you'll see at the bottom, you know, we are running an ongoing uh, a net profit right now at the end of each month. Uh, as I mentioned, we did previous forecasts where the end of the year might not be as such. Um, I do know that we have a sizable uh, invoice that is uh, coming our way um, probably any, any week now from real estate retirement uh, for the employer contribution roughly probably be about $60,000, $65,000. Um, and some other ongoing things that we continuously are, are paying for as well. Uh, just to talk about uh, some of the things for the monthly narrative, 
uh, for uh, just to give you an idea of a year in forecast, as I mentioned, there won't be any earned income taxes for the month of April. Um, and about that late real estate retirement payment, I apologize. Uh, the pro the budget process, um, as we approach budgeting, uh, well, no, we're in budgeting season. Um, uh, myself and Kyle uh, and the Board of Commissioners have been discussing uh, many things for the budget process. Uh, myself and the Treasurer, uh, Commissioner Franklin, uh, met last week to go over some things uh, that has been input in our first draft um, draft proposal. Um, I was talking to all the departments as well to make sure that we are considerate about the things that should be in there uh, without annexation and things that may or may not need to be in there uh, with annexation as well. And we have our first uh, draft budget draft meeting approaching in the coming weeks, I believe, uh, next week, I believe as well. So, so that budget process is ongoing. Uh, the, the, uh, the Board of Commissioners and the public will hear uh, many variations, not to confuse a lot of, not to, to confuse us all, uh, but most certainly we have uh, about three more months till we get to that end goal for the next fiscal year as well. And for right now, oh, my last thing I wanted to talk about was the business license update. Um, so I believe at the last work session or the town meeting, uh, Board of Commissioners had asked a few questions about the business license program. Um, so I just want to give a, a quick update and what I'll do is I'll provide a memo to the Board of Commissioners about uh, what I was able to find from at least uh, some of the other uh, communities or municipalities in Prince George's County as well. But currently right now, uh, we sent our, our invoices or notices out to the uh, local businesses uh, in uh, November of 2020, uh, lowered that fee from $300 to $45 um, this fiscal year with uh, the means to potentially adjust or to look at and see uh, what is a good set number for the town of Upper Marlboro. Uh, right now we have 54 applications. Um, so 54 uh, businesses have applied, but not all 54 have paid, uh, 44 have paid. So um, I think some businesses, uh, they see a problem, um, I, a little bit of our site. And what I mean by that, Kyle had made some, uh, some notations about this last uh, meeting about this potentially getting the software update in our financial software. So when businesses go into our website, they go to one area to uh, fill out an application. And once they hit submit, it doesn't directly take them to the payment, a payment site. Uh, they often call back to find out what they have to do to pay. And I have to redirect them uh, to another site and or step within that so that they can go make a payment as well. So I think that might have been some of the some uh, hiccups that some businesses see as well. But uh, like I mentioned, 54 applicants and uh, 44 of those have paid. Um, I've reached out to a few uh, municipalities as, as mentioned in Prince George's County, and this will be highlighted in my memo to the board, but most of the, uh, the municipalities I reached out to, actually all except for one, I reached out to nine municipalities and all except for one has a business license fee program that exceeds $100. So. Eagle Harbor was the uh, the one small municipality whose um, business license fee is twenty five dollars, and the remaining, as I mentioned, were either uh, ranged from one hundred dollars to roughly four hundred dollars. But there were a few that uh, charged like a fifty dollar application fee and goes up to about a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars. And of course, we tried. I tried to look at municipalities that were similar in size similar with the, their business structure and also have the same amount of foot traffic that we have as well. Um, so, but again, that's something I'll put in the memo. Um, there was one municipality that did not have a fee structure like we did, well, like we do. Uh, theirs were based off of gross uh, receipts and that was Berwyn Heights. So um, that's a little bit of the business license research that I've done. And I, again, I'll put pinpoint that in uh, the memo, but that's all I have for the finances for the month of February. Thank you, Will, for doing that and explaining it so clearly. Hi, this is Patty. Um, is there a detailed report of all of the spending or is this all this? I didn't see it in the packet. That's all. I didn't see it in the packet, all of the breakdown for the different areas. Is that not being shown anymore? It's in the packet. It's after the meeting minutes because they are approved along with all the uh, you know, the treasurer's report and the meeting minutes. So at the end of the meeting minutes, there should be the treasurer's report in the packet. Um, I thought I was looking at it and I never saw it. Okay, I'll go look for it again. Maybe I'm looking someplace in the wrong spot. Thank you. 
I didn't see it. Okay, any questions for Mr. Morgan before I let him go? Thank you, Will, for that presentation. And next up is Dave Williams from the clerk's office. Um, I do not have a report at this time. Okay, thank you. Okay, we will move on to committee reports. Uh, first up is the historical committee. Um, we have a, we had our meeting on the 21st of February. Um, and that was the day that we decided to put out the, um, the, the, the uh, oral history for Black History Month. Um, I hope everybody saw it. And if not, I, I, I hope you get a chance to look at it. Um, we spent probably three or four weeks working with these folks to get it done. Um, it was real enjoyable. They actually enjoyed it. Um, and we're considering doing a couple more just because uh, it was it was enjoyable for, for both the participants and, and us as well. Um, and then um, we will have our next meeting on March 21st. Okay, next up is the events committee. Thank you, Patty. Um, events, my two committees, events and green team didn't um, meet. So there's not a lot of events going on and the green team was just that everyone kind of was like, oh, wait, we had a meeting tonight. So we'll work that out for um, next month. Okay, uh, sustainable communities, Evelyn Stevens. Hello, everyone. Not much to say this month other than uh, we have gotten additional confirmation that we have monies, about $50,000 uh, in our uh, facade improvement program, which this year we also are going to be able to help people who have some uh, improvement on the inside of their building. Uh -oh. So we're, 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 we'll be working on that now that we've got the heads up. Uh, you know, we're feverishly going to be working on uh, getting that information out to our businesses. So we're very pleased to, to know that we did get some money. <laughs> uh, and our next meeting uh, hopefully will be March the 17th at 1.30. Okay. Thank you. And next up is the Arts Council. Hi, yes. Good, good evening, everyone. So the Arts Council is moving right along. Um, thankfully, um, we have some really experienced folks on the team um, that have put some work into getting everything up and running in terms of finding out um, or putting together some documents, finding out how we're going to spread those funds out through like semi-finalist honorariums and administrative fees and advertising. Um, we also, this is a grant through MSAC. So the good news is, is that um, they're working on this. Um, if anyone knows someone that is interested Soon they'll have a website up. I think it's going to go through our website. Is that correct, um, uh, Kyle? In terms of application, it's going to be a two dollar fee. Yeah. Um, well, actually, that the the, uh, the arts council is going to absorb the two dollar fee. Um, oh, they are. The site. Yeah. So it's going to we're going to link it through the town website. They currently have a, a page. The arts council has a web page, um, and uh, so it's going to go through a separate system, but it's going to be linked to our site. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so um, that's about it, but um, we're well on our way. And once, um, if anyone wants any, any additional information, as Kyle said, they have their own website. So it's on at least under the town's website. Um, so you can click that link and check out updated information for the group. Uh, what any is, questions? Yes. What is the name of that grant source you just said? I'm unfamiliar with how it's, to spell it. Oh, it's MSAC, the MSAC grant. So 
Are you meaning um, that? What's the E-N acronym? Or it's E N. Or can you do it so I can do the put it correctly? It's a, uh, can you? Yeah, it's the Maryland State Arts Council um, Public Art Grant. Mm -hmm. And I, I just got an email today. I have to forward it to the Arts Council. The uh, the County Arts Council is also opening up a municipal uh, public art grant. Um, so that's information I'll be sending up, but that's really exciting as well. So now we have two pots of, um, of funding to apply to. Um, so we'll stay tuned for that. Well, that's very exciting news. So that's really good. Thank you, Kyle. So this is going to go towards when we talk about the mural that we've been hoping for, some of that. So it, it's more exciting news to come. So uh, we look forward to seeing what the art committee is going to do for the town. Thank you, Janice. Yes. And do we have a representative from CERT? Yes, I'll speak about CERT. Um, they actually, last month, they actually assisted the Office of Emergency Management with doing some um, emergency preparedness bags. Uh, they did that on two different days and then they had their uh, regular monthly meeting. And um, that was it, that's it for CERT. And we did have a representative of the Marlboro Volunteer Fire Department, um, but they are on an accident in Bowie um, and they just asked for more units. So it may be a bit. Um, and I was going to see if the board wanted to bump up the PG fire uh, letter issue as well, but um, maybe we'll give them some time to see if they hop on. But we do have uh, Chief Wright with the Ritchie Volunteer Fire Department to speak about that letter when we get to that agenda item. Okay, um, thank you. I just want to say that Marlboro Fire Department was here, but I saw them and I thought, <laughs> where'd they go? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's one of the, not hazards, but that's part of the job. Yep. Moments notice. Okay. Uh, we will get to that letter shortly. Uh, we, it shouldn't take us much longer. Uh, next up is the commissioner's reports. Uh, Sarah, do you have anything to report? Um, well, I really enjoyed testifying um, <laughs> at the um, state on the bill regarding the speed cameras. That was super fun. So I hope I get a chance to do it again. Um, and uh, I'm plugging away at the vision plan and we are starting to get into warmer weather. Uh, so I did want to kind of start thinking, we've got the budget to do, so I don't want to distract from that, but I wanted us to kind of start thinking about getting out in the community and talking about what people want to see for the future when we can be outside and it's a little safer for everyone. Um, so those are my reports. <laughs> okay. Uh, Janice? Um, thank you. I just received just some calls from the some neighbors um, or rectory um, concerning like parking on their grass and things like that from other neighbors. Um, these are incidents that are happening pretty much after hours. Um, those neighbors that are partying pretty late and in, into the early morning, maybe it's just like one, but it's, it's causing a situation for quite a few neighbors. Um, so I don't know, I'm just trying to figure out what we can probably do maybe in terms of putting up some signage, um, possibly, I know some people don't wanna see another sign. I mean, you know, but, you know, I'm just trying to think if, if anyone, you know, has any opinion about that. And um, because of course we had some, someone else talk to me about their, their yard being, um, just trashed with the parking. They're actually taking up the entire street. So you can barely get through there on a Saturday at night. You can barely get through there. So if you live with rectory, you're probably going to have to come around to school lane to go down the back way to get to your house. So um, Chief, is that something? I did talk to this particular neighbor to let her know to call 311 I'm not sure if you received um, a call about that. It was um, on Saturday night. I don't know if that was in your report, but I did let her know that she, you know, to follow the process and um, hopefully like we'll be able to take care of it, but it is becoming a situation. And so I don't know, the person is pretty concerned that um, it could get worse 
as the weather changes, because, you know, they like to gather and, you know, people do, but it's pretty small back there, that, that driveway. So um, the street and people's, uh, you know, their yard space. So um, I don't know what we could do about it. Just want to put it on the radar. So I know right, right now, right. Bro, Oh, so no, I was going to say, yeah, I'm looking at for Saturday, there are no, that was the six, right? Yeah. yeah, there are no calls for anything. Um, I'm sorry, Chief, it was Friday. I apologize. Nothing Friday either. Okay. The fifth. Yeah, so the best thing to do is, is to tell them to, you know, call the non emergency number. Um, mm -hmm. That's the first thing, but the other thing is have them talk to their neighbor. You know, if, if this person is a neighbor, you should be able to reach out to them and just say, hey, look, you know, I have a problem with you having your little get togethers or whatever the case may be, but just make sure that your, um, your uh, visitors are respectful of the neighborhood, respectful of people's lawns. And if they even want to take pictures to show the neighbor, look, this is what was left in my yard. This is how my yard looked based on your guests. Um, hopefully they can, you know, have a little bit more neighbor friendly uh, environment the next time, but definitely have people to call because if we don't know about it, you know, I understand they told you, but basically officially there's no report of it. And if it was that bad, somebody should have called other than the person that you actually talked to, because I'm sure there, you know, the houses are right next to each other. So definitely have them call um, and, and, or reach out to their neighbor with, for lack of better words, pictures or knock on their door and say, come look now, look at all this stuff that's laying in my yard. So hopefully whoever car that is, or just tell the people to come clean it up. I mean, that's- Yeah, that's, that's um, I that. did that, the client. So I know that they need to call, not the client, I'm so sorry, I'm used to saying that. But I did mention to the um, the neighbor to, um, con that that's my always my go to contact three three one one. But uh, they feel as though it, it's it could be a situation if they actually confront their neighbor. So not everyone is comfortable doing that, and she's done that before, and it has not worked. So she's at the point of no return with the situation. But yes, I know you said that she didn't call, so I don't. You know, I will make a note to let her know that she to try to reinforce that, to tell her, like, please make that phone call. But it's not just a neighbor, so I just want to tell you, but it's not. And I also have a couple of photos that she sent me. I probably should have said that first. But I do have some photos that she sent me, and it's several cars. It's probably like 12, maybe 15 cars blocking up the street, running on top of people's grass. I mean, just parking anywhere. So... Um, also, this person probably needs to we probably need to look at their property as well, because it seems that there could be a, a citation in the future. OK, um, yeah, but definitely they have to call because we can't. I mean, again, showing us pictures after the fact doesn't really help. I mean, even if the county police go out there, we can at least track the call from when they, you know, were on scene, how long they stayed there, who they talked to as well as the pictures, and if it becomes a problem, then we can address the individual homeowner who's having these uh, parties, but with no police interaction, I mean, really it's a it's a civil matter until it becomes a police, and if they're littering, that's another thing, but you know, if she can't talk to her neighbor, then she has to at least call the police and make them you know, aware of it, then we can follow back up, but you know, I, I know people like to call the commissioners and all that other stuff, but that doesn't help when it comes down to somebody having to go to court or it becoming a bigger issue because them telling somebody who's not in an official capacity to do anything like police work, it doesn't help because we can't pull, you know, we can pull an address and say, okay, there was 10 calls for service there every weekend, but right now nobody on the street called, so... Yeah, I don't know. I can tell you I'm going to reach back out to her, but I hope she didn't have a patty situation. And that could be a reason why that she didn't hold on, you know, you know, to make that report. And, you know, I can attest to patty situation because I've had the same situation in return in in terms of making a report. So it is an exhaustive call that some people just give up on. So I, I can attest to that. 
So I will talk to her. I will reach back out and let you know. And one thing on Rectory I want to bring to the commission's attention. Currently, it's you are allowed to park on Rectory Lane. Um, there's no regulations against it. Um, mm -hmm. Even though, as we've seen, even during the day, there's been some cars that have started. used to, I've never seen a car park on Rectory Lane um, because they have wide driveways. But there is, I think I know the house in the middle of the day, there's the car park taking a path the roadway. Um, so that may be an endeavor uh, the board wishes to consider um, and making it no parking on Rectory Lane because uh, it is a pretty narrow street and barely fits two cars past at a time. Um, because so it, it sounds like if people are parked on the street, they're technically in compliance because it's a it's a, there's a it's not a no parking zone, um, mm -hmm. which may be an issue as well. So that's something we could bring up. And I'm sure the majority of residents on Rectory, if they've experienced this issue of the roadway being blocked, it's not going to be a, a, a big concern for them. They may welcome it. I know we talked about doing no parking on one side of Spring Branch um, about five, six, seven years ago, and that was met with resistance. Um, and then the HOA, Marlboro Town HOA requests us to make one side of Marlboro Drive um, no parking as well. So that's something the board can do. Um, and it's usually the passage of, of a resolution. So just if that escalates, that's always an option as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We look at that. Or Thank you, we... Chief. Should we... Thank you for that, Kyle. That was my next question was, do, do we have no parking on Rectory Lane? But, and I, I could not remember uh, because we've had so many different issues with parking. Uh, and it was never really a problem on Rectory Lane for a long time. But I think we've had a lot of change in residence. On mm -hmm. and There's been maybe an occasional car parked every so often, but now it seems to be routine, a vehicle park. So that's the, that's the issue. But they have and, such long driveways, it's, it's, uh, it's never really been an issue. But that may be something the town wants to uh, consider bringing up and um, we can put it out there. We can put something in the next landings newsletter as a teaser to see if people are interested. Um, and then if we can put the resolution, we can discuss it more at the March work session and pass a resolution at the April town meeting um, could be a potential timeline if this is a pressing issue. Do you think we could, if we put it on our work session agenda and then just like kind of publicize that it was on the agenda so folks could come into the call and kind of maybe we could make public comment on what, what the opinions are part of that is that something we can do or should yeah, we, we could, that we could accept written or if they would just want to shoot an email in support of something like that as well they could either join the call okay. or send some sort of supporting documentation as well what i have found in the past like when we did it with spring branch mm -hmm. I just said, we're having a discussion at the town hall on this date about parking on Spring Branch Drive. And I put that note on every door. And we had standing room only, as long as people are aware of it. So it, that would probably be the best way to do and get that out there. And people will come if you say you're going to restrict their parking, believe me. <laughs> Well, they may welcome this one, uh, but we could also put some signage up on either end of rectory because it would mainly affect the rectory residents. We could put some signs on the stop sign um, saying the town's considering uh, parking. Visit the town website for more info, call town hall, and then there we'll have the information for them to join any meetings. Well, we, so we, can, we can also make that, uh, I don't have a problem walking up and down rectory lane and giving everybody a notice. That way, I know everybody on Rectory Lane is aware of it. Uh, so, I sorry, mean, sorry, Linda. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that's that's an easy thing to do. Uh, I, yeah, nice day. Up and down, one, two, three. Everybody's got to notice. That way, they can't say they didn't get it. They didn't know about it. Sure, yeah, I think that's a great opportunity. Yeah, I'm just wondering if we should, like, timing wise, if we should have. A meeting for it or if you think we can handle it at the next work session i don't know we could um discuss it at the next work session have an opportunity for people to discuss and then approve something at the april town meeting or depend if it gets worse we could do both at, at the next work session well it would also depend on what kind of reaction we got at the work session 
if we get three people who show up and there's only three people on Mercury Lane that are complaining, you, that's a different story. But if you have, you open a floodgate when you say, come and talk about it. Yeah, I was just thinking, um, do, should we do it in April so that people have more time or should we do it in March? Uh, it's really just the time sensitivity of the issue. If uh, if the board feels like it's an issue that should get addressed pretty quickly, we can move it March, or we could push it to April. Um, okay, I, I'm looking at it this way. We have a resident who is at wit's end, and I can appreciate that. Uh, if uh, she, what we don't want it to do is escalate any sooner than it needs, you know, it can. I don't want the situation to escalate for that neighbor. Right. And this is a way for that neighbor to voice her opinion along with others as well. Yes. And it, she would probably be more comfortable in that environment. Uh, so yeah. I think we should do it at the work session to just let everybody know that, that it will be discussed at the work session. Yeah, because it's not just the one resident, it sounds like. It sounds like right. there's parking all along it. Yeah. So it's something to think about. You'll have different viewpoints on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's the point of the discussion. Janice, do you think March works as, or is too soon? I think March may be too soon. Um, I know that it needs to be addressed because I think with the good weather, it, we're going to hear about it again. I do believe that, but I, you know, I don't know. I think that March may just be a little too soon to make sure that she's there and available. I think, you know, with everyone's work schedule, I know this person is working every day, two jobs. So, you know, they may not be able to, you know, make that call so quickly, you know, with, I know it's in two weeks, but that may be too quick for them to be able to jump on a call. I would like to say so, yes, so that we can get this ironed out, but honestly, I don't think so. Well, and it gives people more time to kind of draft an email if they want to draft an email or right. kind of uh, we kind of move it into April is my thinking because I know I would see the notice and go, oh I need to tell them and then I would realize I forgot because it was two weeks later <laughs> um, so right. that's why I was thinking maybe we should do March even though I know you know it's concerning for the one person immediately but we got to think about Janice it. and thank uh, you if you I was gonna say uh, mm -hmm. If you could pass along her information and I can uh, maybe contact her directly and see what her thoughts are. Okay. And no problem, sure. Mm -hmm. Make a decision. And she'll know that we're addressing the situation. Yes, absolutely. Sure, absolutely. Thank you for that. Okay, and thank you for your report. Uh, at this time, I just want to take a few minutes. Uh, Saturday, I attended the funeral for uh, Mrs. Helen Ford. She was the president of the board of commissioner for 18 years. Uh, I saw, saw you there, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Marcella came with me. I also went to the, uh, the, uh, the viewing prior to that and had a long discussion with her son. Uh, she is some. She was a force to be reckoned with in this town. She may not have always done uh, what we think at this point in time was right, uh, but she always had the best interest of this town in her heart and in her mind. Uh, what a lot of people don't know is the CAB is here because of Helen Ford. They wanted to put the CAB in Largo back in the 70s, and she fought to have the county stay here because we are the county seat. She fought for the post office to be built here. She fought for everything that we, you know, uh, she felt the town deserved. So I, she is a, uh, a wonderful individual to talk with and, and chat with, uh, as I'm sure she, Sarah can attest to. Uh, and I've sat on her front porch and had many a conversation with her. Uh, she, and she will be greatly missed. The town has lost uh, a great statesperson. Uh, I do intend to uh, 
highlight her for Women's History Month as our contribution to women's history. Uh, and as we noted uh, this past week, uh, women have been very influential in the town of Upper Marlboro over the years, much more so than men. Uh, most of our commissioners have been women. And we, we again have a full female board. We had one with Tonga and Wanda and myself. Uh, so I think that we will continue to be that force that drives this, this town forward. And uh, Mrs. Ward was just uh, the beginning. So and you will see that uh, come out uh, hopefully very soon. But if you have any uh, anything you might want to pass along about Mrs. Ford, please feel free to email town and let us know. Um, a lot of people knew her very well. Uh, she knew everybody and during her tenure. So uh, again, someone who we will miss greatly. Yes. And Mayor, with that, um, since it is Women's History Month, um, in your honoring of her for one of those days, I think it would also be appropriate for us to also honor um, Tonga Turner in some way because she is the first African-American mayor of the town. So I think that would be a great opportunity to honor her as well That's in some way. Well, we have a whole month to do those things. Yeah, so yeah. History month. So we will, we will uh, and if anyone else has any suggestions, uh, feel free to bring them forward. I think it might be nice to also um, put Miss Evelyn on the spot because she has done a lot of the town and she's been here a long, long time too. So maybe she can give a little bio. <laughs> no. <laughs> <She's> <laughs> <laughs> we, like I said, we have a whole bunch to, to do some finagling there. You're going to convince her? I've been known to get her to do things she didn't really <laughs> But I, she doesn't really get to say, have a say, actually. Uh, she is another person who has been like, she's done it quite a bit for the town just in the past few years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, even more so. So. Uh, we have a number of women to thank over the years. Yes, and also to include Wanda, of course. Well, yes, that's close right. saying. Yeah, maybe we can do one a week. That's, there's probably other people we're missing, but we can do the four of them. Oh, we've missed some weeks. <laughs> okay. Uh, whoops, let's see here. Okay, with all the reports uh, finished, Let's get on to business. The first item up for business is the Charter Amendment Resolution 01-2021, establishing board positions. This is for a board vote. This has been before the board, before uh, the body several times. So. Uh, David, if you could read it for us, please. Um, I would love to, Madam Mayor. Um, I just want to point out that this will be is technically the second reading. We did have a public hearing uh, on this particular uh, Charter Amendment resolution back on the 9th. Uh, that was the official first reading. So uh, I won't stall anymore. Charter Amendment resolution number 01-2021, a charter amendment resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the Town of Upper Marlboro, Maryland, amending the charter of the Town of Upper Marlboro, Maryland by creating the offices of Town Administrator and Chief of Police, and by permitting the official use of the alternative title of Mayor by the President of the Board of Commissioners and making certain stylistic, grammatical, and non-substantive changes thereto. And I'll just point out uh, uh, for those that may have the copy with them, the last page has a schedule of publication. Uh, there will be four weekly publications 
um, giving the fair summary of the uh, uh, Charter Amendment resolution that will run um, March 18th, March 25th, April 1st, and April 8th of the Prince George's Post, but it will also be at the same time on the town website. Uh, that's a, uh, a, a, a mandatory schedule for a charter amendment resolution to give the opportunity if uh, anybody, uh, um, you know, if, if there is an objection to it and uh, that then the board can uh, look at uh, anything, you know, either, either making changes or uh, uh, passing it as is. Okay, do I have any questions or comments before we take the vote? Hearing none, do I have a motion to I motion that we approve Charter Amendment Resolution 01-2021 establishing positions. Do you have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All ayes, so noted. Thank you. Uh, the second is Resolution 2020-06. which is a, the extension of the, um, I'm sorry. Uh, the I, I, I was muted. I was gonna read aloud the thing. Uh, okay. Would right. you please, that way that I don't have to go there. Go yes, ma'am. Uh, the Town of Upper Marlboro, Resolution 2021-06, Session Regular Town Meeting, dated March 9th, 2021. A resolution of the Board of Commissioners for the Town of Upper Marlboro to approve an application for a planning assistance to uh, municipalities. We're, we're on the, uh, the uh, agenda is wrong. That is an error that happened in, uh, in the changing of all the uh, documents. So. No, the, the 2021-06 is the extension. For the PMAC. No. PAMC. No, that's 202107. 20, According There's to some confusion, um, the agenda has been messed up. So since Enough you tabled the, uh, the PAMC, Mayor, we could just skip right to uh, the declaration, the continuity of declaration um, 202101. And I think in the resolution, it's written as resolution 07. Um, and then we'll just rename the PAMC one. Okay. When it, when it gets approved down Wait. the line. Did the numbers just get flipped? Is that it? Or yeah, we had some interchanging and then the DOE has technically two numbers, so that didn't help. Uh, so we apologize. <laughs> it's got a declaration number and then a resolution number. So it all kind of just compiled. So that that's our fault. We apologize. Um, yeah. The agenda has got the errors. But the documents are numbered correctly. Okay, so this so one is for the extending the state of emergency. Yes, yeah, so we'll start, start over again. Let's, let's start that over again. Um, okay, so this will be, I will just go right into reading the uh, intro. The Town of Upper Marlboro, Maryland, joint declaration of a local state of emergency, town emergency order number DOE 2021-01 and resolution number 2021-07 resolution of the town board of commissioners of the town of Upper Marlboro extending the local state of emergency initially issued on March 25th, 2020 through June 30th, 2021. And again, I emphasize it's a joint resolution. So it's number at the bottom, you can see at the bottom where the page numbering is, it is uh, appropriate to call it the joint order number DOE 2021-01 and resolution 2021-07. 
And I can provide a brief overview if you'd like, Mayor. Yes, please. Um, so this is, as everyone knows, we've extended the declaration over time to extend it, um, requires a board vote if it goes over the 30 days. Um, so this is the fourth extension. It'll run through June 30th, um, three to four months as usual. So we're not doing it every month. Um, there's only two real changes compared to in it. Um, one is it allows uh, general government to be a bit more flexible in allowing more on-site hours at town hall. Previously, we had um, one person in a day um, with rotating days when people were in. Um, now that the general government staff and pretty much the staff as a whole in the town um, is getting vaccinated as well, the town offices will remain close to the public. However, we'll allow um, maybe two administrative people in at a time. It just gives that flexibility to increase some hours and uh, start getting some stuff done. Um, and then the second part is it um, extends the 15 minute carry out only parking spots. Um, they were due to expire at the end of the last DOE. This one ties it to the, uh, um, the current status of the county courthouse, if what phase of opening they're in. Um, so pretty much at this point, it lists as if it's in phase three or below, which are the lower occupancy levels, um, the free parking spaces remain. Uh, but once the courthouse goes to four or five or six um, stages, four or five or six, where they can see more cases, more in-person jury trials. Um, and that's when the need for parking will go up and the uh, resident and the visitors uh, patronizing the businesses as well, because they'll be downtown go up as well. And that's when we would remove those sign spaces. Um, so that's the only two changes, but I can take any questions. Um, I just, because we're talking about this, I wanted to kind of talk a little about the new CDC guidelines. And I don't know if, if we want to push that to talk about that later or now because it's relevant now. Um, but I know um, that it's becoming, you know, safer for fully vaccinated people to be around each other. Um, but I know that like, so I got my second shot today, but it's gonna be two more weeks until I'm considered fully vaccinated. I don't know how the rest of the town is, uh, but I think, and I don't know if we can ask for that information from people because it's technically medical information um, or if we need to maintain things. But I mean, I think even if we're vaccinated, we need to be continuing to wear a mask, covering our nose and our mouth with the mask, um, making sure to respect others by keeping them safe um, and doing that until everyone is fully vaccinated. Um, and then we should be able to go to the CDC. Um, but I think people should, if they're uncomfortable, they should be able to kind of talk to Will or talk to commissioners or whoever. Absolutely, yeah, that's a good point. I know uh, Will and I were gonna work on sending an email out to staff once this was extended. Um, and I think we got some additional information on CDC guidelines from uh, Legit or Chesapeake, one of the two. I know Dave forwarded it to me as well. We're gonna try and incorporate that in there as well. But Okay, so you guys yeah. are already on it. Yeah, <laughs> and that's and in the email, we're gonna talk about that as staff are vaccinated, um, the town hasn't required it, um, uh, but once they get their second shot, if they could just forward the paperwork over to HR, it, it's voluntary. Um, we'll emphasize that because we haven't set any restrictions, but um, you just forward the paperwork over uh, to Mr. Will Morgan so we can just put in the employee file and um, we can move from there. Maybe we should have like masking required until Will, so then he doesn't have to say individual person, but he can be the person that says, okay, yeah. everyone has had two weeks since their last shot and is fully vaccinated. So now masking is only necessary when residents are in or whatever. Absolutely. Yeah. And we're also following um, the county and state guidelines as well as, as they require um, masks in public buildings. I think that will probably continue for us as well. Okay. That's something else we're playing off of. Because um, yeah. it's, I know today Governor Hogan released a bunch of stuff, but it's got to come down the county level and reopening capacities, but keeping the masks in place, which this, uh, this declaration does still do. That's why I put that extra line in there so people don't think it was a free-for-all. Yeah, and I think, <laughs> sorry, too, when we start to open up, we should look at some of those, like, signs. We don't have to get a really cute one, but they have, like, cats and making sure that it's covering your whole face and all that. <laughs> Just to put on the, we should see if we can get something like that for the office. Um, 
as more people are coming. Absolutely. In. Yep. And that's something um, we'll be working through as well. If once we, before we even plan to reopen the staff, which I don't think we'll do before uh, July. Okay. Um, but we do have a lot of measures in place already as well. Hand sanitizer screening, but that that's all stuff that we're, we're definitely going to work on. Um, but we'll definitely bring everything to the board to make sure everyone's on board and ready to go before we even think about reopening. But thank you. Those are all. Yeah. We, we do have regular meetings or calls with the state and the county as to where each one it has us, so to speak. Uh, so we, we have to take all of that into considerations, uh, both Kyle and I uh, and Chief as well are on those calls every week. Uh, I get a call for, on with the county and I, we get a call with the state and various calls in between. <laughs> so well, we make sure that we're really setting a good example with our masks too. So um, with this, I think it would be also a good idea to um, touch bases with Insurity since they are our HR consultant and um, see what they think in terms of the HR standpoint in dealing with employees and so forth. I think that they would be good to reach out to since we do have them. That's a good idea, Janice. Yeah, it'll keep us from trying to guess and guesstimate different <laughs> situations. That's what we pay them for. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Okay, uh, with all of that said, we still have to vote. Okay. I have a motion. make a motion that we approve resolution 2021-07 regarding the joint declaration of a local state emergency. Do I have a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so noted. Thank you. And the next order of business is a letter uh, to the county fire chief uh, concerning coverage. Uh, at this time, we have Chief. Who, who is with us this evening? Uh, we have Chief Wright of the Ritchie Volunteer Fire Department Mayor, and I think Marlboro just texted me as well. They cleared the call. They should be hopping on in a bit. Um, but I can do a quick overview, and then hopefully by that time, Marlboro's joined on as well. We can turn it over to the- Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. If you would give us a, give everyone a quick overview of our concerns. Absolutely. Um, so um, over the past month or so, there's been three uh, working fires, that's just called around, not in the town, thankfully, but immediately outside. One in Balmoral was a townhouse fire. We had another townhouse fire on our Colonel's Choice Road in the villages. Um, and then there was a third fire as well. I'm sure Chief Wright may know off the top of Marlboro. Um, but in those three cases, it came, um, we realized that, um, oh, here we go, Marlboro's joining in now. Uh, the issue of ladder truck um, coverage in the uh, Upper Marlboro area. Um, there were three, it used to be not be an issue. Um, there was a ladder truck at the Marlboro station um, up until about three or four years ago. They moved it to the Croon station where it sat up until just a couple months because they realized that if the Marlboro station wasn't helping because if there was a fire in Marlboro, the Marlboro Fire Department would take the fire engine versus the ladder truck first. Um, so at least if it was in uh, the Croon station, it would be coming as well. It, it's just as close. Um, and then we also had ladder trucks at the Ritchie Fire Station and a ladder or tower ladder truck at the lower buoy firehouse. They have four stations. So at the lower one on uh, Pointer Ridge Drive. Um, in the past six months or so, and the chiefs can correct me, um, those three ladder trucks have disappeared. Um, and it, for an extended period of time, I don't know, one... Uh, 45, the Croon station has definitely been, uh, they've eliminated that service. And then the other two ladder trucks, the buoy one and the Richie one have been out of service for quite some time because of mechanical issues. And it sounds like they may or may not come back. Um, so the town has previously engaged the fire department when there's an issue of they moved some um, ambulances around. We sent them a letter. Um, 
And then we, the fire chief came out, talked, worked through some stuff and it all worked out. Um, so it seems to be the process that we do every couple of years, we kind of touch base. So that's, uh, we drafted a letter trying to, overall the fire EMS department is doing an excellent job protecting the town. Um, it's just this one area concern of a ladder truck um, not being in the upper Marlboro area. Um, and I can just pull a map over. And uh, so we just wanted to bring it to the board and the public to discuss before we send the letter see if it's a good idea. And then um, any feedback we get from the county fire chief, we can bring back. But here's kind of a map. And I'll turn it over to uh, Captain Kendall and uh, Chief Wright if they want to kind of give a, a better in-depth situation of the ladder trucks. Um. Oh, hello, everybody. Um, this is uh, Captain Wallace from the Marlboro Volunteer Fire Department. I'm sure most of you guys have seen or heard me around um so like kyle was saying earlier our station is uh located downtown of marlboro maryland so when a fire comes out in our first new area we don't uh, a ladder truck here wouldn't really benefit the citizens of up marlboro like the town uh we take the engine first which has hose and water um the ladder truck at richie which uh chief grady walter Wright, he's in the meeting as well his ladder truck is uh, due to over 75% of our first due. We have a good working relationship with those guys too. And uh, I don't know if they're having issues with the county or getting a new ladder truck in their station, but he would be able to expand on that further. And can you confirm just the, uh, the status of Tower 43 and Tower 45, the other two? I just want to make sure I have my facts straight that they're, I guess Tower 45 is gone completely. And Tower yeah, 43 the, at least hasn't been in service for six months, maybe? Yeah, the tower moved from 45 to 43 and then hasn't been in service since uh, we lost leaves on the trees. So uh, we're pushing seven months, six months at least. Thank you. And I guess now we can turn it over to a, a Chief Wright to kind of give an overview of the status of the, the Ritchie uh, ladder truck. Yes, uh, good evening. I'm Chief Walter Wright of the Ritchie Volunteer Fire Department, uh, Station 37, labeled there on the map. I just want to thank you for having me this evening. Um, so just a little bit of background information and what's going on with our ladder truck. Uh, historically, Ritchie was only supplied an engine company. Um, it wasn't until 2010, um, under the direction of the county fire chief at the time, Eugene Jones, that he put a county owned ladder truck that was moved to Ritchie from the Capitol Heights Fire Department for a better area coverage. Uh, as Captain Wallace stated, uh, truck 837 is typically first due truck to the majority of the area or if not third due to the greater Upper Marlboro area. Um, truck 837, it's a 1996 ladder truck. So it makes it the oldest uh, frontline apparatus in the county. Um, it's been plagued with mechanical issues since we got it in 2010. Uh, year after year, we're told by the county to do everything we can to help ensure that it lasts till the next year. The next year comes and goes and we're told the same thing. Um, despite the, the department and the membership putting in countless hours in station performing maintenance on the truck, uh, it typically develops mechanical issues that can't be fixed in the station and uh, it ends up going out of service to uh, to a shop, um, typically sometimes taking a month or two to get back in service. Um, over the last five years, um, it's typically a common trend where we're able to keep it in service for six to eight months before one of those mechanical failures happen. And then, like I said, it's lost for an extended period of time. Um, currently, the truck is out of service due to an accident. It was involved in back in mid-November. Um, to this date, it's just set in the same place at the county's apparatus maintenance facility since the accident. Um, we haven't had any communication. Uh, we haven't been able to receive any communication back as regards to its status. Um, we were just able to get partial of the equipment off of it so we could even get a reserve in service if the county has a reserve ladder truck fleet, um, but we still are not able to get even the equipment back from them uh, to even make that a possibility if one comes available. Um, and also to this date, uh, we haven't had any communication about it being replaced. So at the end of the day, we're still left with the, the oldest truck in the county um, and no idea if it's getting fixed or when or even replaced at this point. 
Um, if you have any questions or need any assistance uh, in regards to this matter in the future, um, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, Kyle has my contact information. And uh, again, thank you for your time this evening. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Um, and I can open up for if any commissioners have any questions on the situation. Um, but as of right now, and the, the two members of the fire department can correct me, but the, the closest ladder truck to Upper Marlboro is uh, the District Heights truck 26, um, about 10 miles away. And if you Google map it, it's 17 minutes. Um, so that's uh, obviously a concern. I think actually on the Balmoral call, Captain Wallace, if you can correct me, it was the Glendale ladder truck was the first arriving ladder truck, correct? That's correct. Uh, Glendale was the first arriving ladder truck and then uh, Anne Arundel Tower 5, which is huh, 20 minutes if you GPS it away. So so one, one fire isn't an issue to the town, but the fact that it's happened three times um, is what kind of alarmed us to, to the situation of the fire EMS coverage um, surrounding the town. So that's just the letters kind of just help opens up the dialogue. And usually we'll get contacted by the senior county fire expressed concerns, go back and forth and, and resolutions made um, is how it's worked in the past. So. Okay, as far as uh, my comment goes, fire in downtown Upper Marlboro do not mix well. We know this. Uh, and anything we can make, it assures swift uh, dispatch on this uh, would be very welcome. We, I've watched the courthouse burn. I've watched uh, the corner water in Maine burn. Uh, yes, ma'am. And uh, to speak on that, uh, truck 37 was actually the first new ladder truck to the fire, the Owls fire. Yeah, oh, no, I mean, I... <laughs> You guys were great on that, uh, and it, we are blessed to have you right here. And we'd like to have you as fully staffed and fully uh, equipped as possible. It is to the town's benefit. So, uh, I, any other questions or comments? I think this is, thank you for bringing this to our attention. And um, I think we need to send a letter and help get you guys the equipment you need to keep us safe. So thank you for keeping us safe. <laughs> and uh, just heads up, we don't expect this to be a, a quick resolved issue because a ladder truck is uh, pushing a million dollars for the county. So just the fact voice our concern, let them know. Um, and. Maybe they could come back telling us that they're planning on ordering a ladder truck and that's, they'll try their best to get a reserve truck into Ritchie, but just, uh, yeah, the first step's just reaching out um, <laughs> and then go from there. If you, don't, if you don't ask, you, you won't know. Um, and, and, uh, and expressing our concern is what we need to do. So if nothing else, we can, we'll go forward and we'll, we'll send the letter if there's no other concerns. And uh, I just wanted to thank, uh, Captain Wallace and uh, Chief Wright for joining us tonight and for everything Thank you do. for your input and all the wonderful work you do on behalf of the town of Upper Marlboro and the surrounding areas. Okay, uh, next up is administrative updates. Kyle, that would be you with legislation projects and initiatives. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, so first up, the Heritage Area, we haven't gotten too much leeway on that. Um, we're still moving forward with the, uh, they have the consultant working on that expansion project. Uh, the playground and the solar, the town hall solar projects are both still at the county DPI stage. Um, there have been a couple of fees that have popped up that we, that the, uh, the permit expediter who was hired by the, both contractors weren't expecting. Um, so instead of them approaching us every time with one of these required fees, um, and we even reached out to DPI to see, at least on the playground side, because it's a public community playground and a public works project, if we could waive some of the fees and they, they politely said no. 
Um, so we just requested both firms to uh, just give us a change order at the end with all the permits and fees. That way they can just on their end pay the fee and move it to the next stage in the permitting process to get this moving. Uh, Cause I know the playground is, they expected to have the permit by now as well. And the um, same with the solar. So we're working through those. Um, I know Mr. Wor Morgan's working with the auditing firm and the accounting firm on the uh, financial policies. So hopefully we can get that up and running and effective in the, for the next fiscal year. So we're starting the next fiscal year out um, solid. The Pepco vehicle charging stations are, um, I could probably take this off. It's on hold over at the Showplace Arena. They've, it's been in construction mode for about six or seven months. I'm not sure what the status of those are, um, but they did mention them in a, on a Pepco call that um, I was on. They were um, um, talking about that. So I'll, I'll see if we can get those up and running, but obviously the the plan is to bring those charging stations into downtown Upper Marlboro and other areas as well. Uh, the mural grain application, as Commissioner Duck had touched on, is moving forward. Um, and it may be, we're thinking, as two murals are coming through, we may request one mural be funded by the county, one mural be funded by the state. Um, so that's plans moving forward. Main Street, Maryland, I reached out again. They apologized for the wait on getting us back to our um, affidavit or our affiliate status. Um, they've been bogged down with a bunch of the COVID relief funds have been flowing through their office, um, but they promised to hear back, or I should hear back from the next couple of weeks so we can get that going. The ham employee handbook and job descriptions moving on very quickly. I know I've talked to both uh, Chief and um, Mr. Bond about their um, job descriptions for comments, and um, Mr. Morgan and I are speaking with the HR firm tomorrow. Uh, we have two formats for the uh, job descriptions, we're going to talk over with them. And then once a format selected, we're going to pretty much merge all those into that format, tweak them, bring them before the board at the March work session, hopefully, and then approve them in April. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Same with the handbook as well. Uh, solar project, I talked about park enforcement upgrade. Um, as everyone knows, we went with IPS. Um, and so we've, IPS sent us the startup package. We gave them all the information we needed and where there's even a cost savings um, because when we ordered the printing, we don't have to order new uh, ticket paper for the printers, um, and we don't have to order new printer hardware. We're going to keep what we have and use it up, and then order new tickets from them moving forward. So they were actually pretty impressed that we uh, we could do that. We uh, we made the tickets generic so that we could because we were planning ahead for to doing this. So they said that save both time and money. Um, so that because apparently ordering right now the paper for citations being used for masks. So that's in, in short supply. So the fact that we had a, a supply is moving forward. So hopefully we can get them through the process and get everything going soon and we can switch over and uh, send Passport the letter, letting them know that we're gonna be uh, no longer using them. Um, I have not heard anything back from the Levy and Western Branch grading project from dpw and um, As the board's aware, they, they said back in October they would have it. Um, but I did reach out to them and I'm trying to work with them in park and planning about the path um, along there. So uh, the grant funding for um, pathways, sidewalks and whatnot's coming up and opening up. There's a couple of different programs on the state and federal level that I want to apply for um, and moving that forward. So I'm trying to get approval from park and planning in the county to at least let us apply for grant funding. And if we get the funding, get the project moving. Um, so I'm just trying to get there. Um, their consent to do something like that so that we're not waiting too long. Um, so we're trying to take a proactive approach. Um, so I'm working with um, them on that. Annexation, um, we've engaged the surveying firm finally, which is very exciting. We're trying to get them out here in the next week or so. They're trying to figure out their schedule um, so that they can do the final boundary survey. And from that, it goes to uh, attorney best to draft the annexation. Um, Resolution document, we did door knocking with Commissioner Franklin and Mr. Bond. Um, it was pretty cold that day. <laughs> um, and uh, we were able to talk to some residents who were excited, some who weren't. Um, but we're also working, I know uh, Commissioner Pinoy, or Mayor Pinoyer is working with one commercial property and then one more registered voter, which is we need one property and one voter and we're completely solid, ready to go. Um, we've also sent... Um, and that, that's where we're at, so on that. Um, the budget development, um, we're pushing forward that. We looked at the calendar last work session. 
Um, I'm going to be posting that to the town website so the residents know when to follow along. Um, the sewer repairs are continuing around town. Um, we were able to move the noisy truck off Church Street to uh, the school lane, and I now realize how noisy that truck is because I can hear it inside when it kicks on. So hopefully Commissioner Duckett can't hear it from her house, um, but we haven't gotten any other complaints from that. So uh, <laughs> I get, it does sound like the truck's starting up, but it's, the, it's starting up to power the refrigeration unit. So I completely understand and the frustration that came out of Church Street. So I'm glad we were able to work through that. Um, and we're also working with WSSC. They duct tape no parking signs to our parking, nice new parking meters downtown that pulls paint off. Um, so we're trying, yeah. So we were able to get the duct tape off before it kind of stuck to it too bad. Um, but it, yeah, that's, uh, um, we're trying to work through that and figure out what's going on, what they're gonna be doing down there. But um, you may see no parking signs with WSSC on the Pratt side of things. Um, and the racial equality, I know, is always a big thing moving forward. I definitely have to work with Commissioner Franklin on the board uh, to move that forward as well. Um, but that, I think that is it I have. Anyone can ask me any um, issue. I know oh, uh, working with the state um, environment about the uh, issue of the pallets still on Water Street. Um, they're sending an inspector, and I have a reminder in my calendar to touch base with them every two months. And uh, we're also coordinating with CSX on the pilot. We got some next door. I don't know if anyone's noticed on next door, um, there is a feed going on. It started with the issue of trash dumped on the property on Old Crane Highway going toward Route 4 um, up on the hill. There was some debris across from the church. Uh, that is outside of the town. So back in December, when we first noticed it, we did um, uh, put it over to the county. Um, not sure what's come of that. Um, so we checked in with them on that. And then, so that popped up on next door. The town was able to engage and, and let them know that we were working on it and ways that um, directed residents to go call the 301 helpline. And then also the district nine county council member whose jurisdiction is until that property is annexed into the town, then our code enforcement would kick in. Um, but because it's outside the town, we're very, we're pretty much a resident, a concerned resident neighbor at that point, which is kind of odd to sit on this side of the fence, I'll admit. Um, and way through the process, but then also um, in that it came up the debris on the railroads at the CSX crossing that had been there for several uh, months, possibly going on a year. So I was able to go through and re-report it to CSX. They actually have a really well, well put together reporting website. And I talked to one of the inspectors and they're going to take care of the big pile of debris. Um, they weren't sure why it was left there. And then they also said that there's going to be some other work happening there as well. Um, so there may be some more equipment stage over there, but they're definitely going to take care of that debris. Um, so that's some issues we popped up monitoring on, on social media. I'll take any questions. Yeah. Well, thank you for that, Kyle, too, because that was a, it's a huge eyesore. So I think a lot of people have noticed it, I'm sure. Well, you know. And they probably think that it's the town of Upper Mar Road that could do something about it. But thank you for reaching out to try to resolve that issue. Really appreciate it. I have a question too. Uh, is the Adopt a Highway still a program? Yes. Okay, because the 725 does have Adopt a Highway signs not far from trash there, and it's sponsored. Uh, I don't know. The, I don't think we, thing, right? <laughs> the sponsor isn't ideal. Um, I know that much, but I'm not sure. I know I've tried to engage the state highway about um, us adopting some roadways as well and getting, because we pretty much adopt like 725 and Main Street, have our public works and the town adopt it. But I don't know if that pro program's too much involved. Um, but I know the construction to breathe, I don't think the, the sons of the Confederate Revolution would be able to pick that up anyways. Um, <laughs> right. That is the name on the sign. So as yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's outside the town limits right now. Um, yeah. It's not in town. As soon as it becomes annexed, that will that's on my list to address and work with State Highway on. And um, if it accidentally gets pulled over by a public works truck, that's right. Um, well, <laughs> us adopting that would be a good <laughs> that problem. <laughs> Okay, anything else for Kyle? 
At this time, uh, I will open uh, the floor to public comment. Anyone is more than welcome to make a comment on any subject whatsoever. I actually, sorry, I forgot one thing in my report. Um, and I just wanted to let everyone know that I've started to get some responses from HOAs. Remember when we talked about like an HOA collective. Uh, so I'm gonna probably be setting up a meeting in the next couple of weeks for that. Um, just wanted to like not blindside you with it when I set up a meeting and I didn't mention it. Hi, this is Patty. Um, Kyle, thank you for giving me back my sleep. And um, now if you can quiet the peepers, I'd be appreciative. Peepers? The peepers started coming out now. I can hear no them. Frogs. I couldn't hear them when, when they had all the, that, uh, all those, uh, the generator running. They're nice sleeping music. People pay. Yes, they are. Them. And Patty, you should be very happy they're there. Hey, I uh, believe me. I, I would much rather hear the peepers than what I was listening to. Believe <laughs> oh, uh, just a, a, a silly point. Um, the historic name for that area is Frogtown. Apt. It's told to me by a former Tolson uh, resident of the area. That's an interesting fun fact. Thank you. That'll be on the year-end quiz. <laughs> oh, um, the town was designated Tree City, USA. I apologize for that. I completely forgot that. Um, so I, I contacted the State Forestry Service. They're going to have our supplies by Arbor Day, which is the first Wednesday in April. Um, and so I've, I'm trying to think of what kind of unveiling ceremony or something we can do with it. Because we get uh, Tree City, USA signs, is my understanding, to put on all the entrance signs. Um, so hopefully we can do some sort of unveiling there. Um, we can plant some crepe myrtles for Janet. Yes, exactly. So as uh, long as you don't plant them anywhere near my yard, I'll be fine. <laughs> I don't okay. know how that escaped <laughs> my mind. Helen did have the most amazing crepe myrtles in town. They're so awesome to look at. <laughs> right. yeah. Not great. when your car is parked underneath them. <laughs> uh, but it's her, it was her driveway, not mine. I just get to enjoy them. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> your car is parked underneath them. It is not a nice tree. <laughs> not your favorite. Uh, uh -huh. we we do have a number of record trees in the town. Uh we're going to try and uh locate them and send you on a scavenger hunt for them. Uh because they, we do have state record trees. That's a great kid event too. Yes. Kid yeah. As part of Tree City. And uh, I'm looking to find some seedlings for, uh, to distribute for the children to plant their own tree. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a couple of nurseries that are going to let me know. And uh, planting a tree is a good thing. Mm -hmm. It gives children some ownership uh, and they can watch it grow. Mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, I've got three trees in my backyard that I planted from seedlings from the Arbor Day Society 30 years ago. So I think Pepco was also giving out trees at some point in time, weren't they? They, they give out um, trees like they have to do with like the shading and the like reducing your energy bill and you can apply for them. So I tried Helen, to... Helen Ford had some trees cut down oh my because gosh, of the in... wires yeah. and they were supposed yeah. to give her replacement they trees. They, I, I think she worked with them to get the Cynthia's instead. Um, I know I could talk to her about that because she has since had the Cynthia's on the one side. So I think it's all, I will see in a few weeks, but I think it's the Cynthia's where that tree was to like balance it. But yeah, so if they take down your tree, they give you more trees, but there's also a program where you can um, get free trees to they're, to like kind of shade your home. I know this because I tried to get them to give me trees 
the red buds that I have at the street and they wouldn't because they're not near my house. <laughs> so it has to ha it has to do with reducing your energy costs. See, see now we have we have the question, do you put up solar panels and not trees? <laughs> Cuz right now I wouldn't have a, a tree in my front yard because my whole front of my house has solar panels and I don't need to shade them. Yeah, my tr my I can't use solar panels because of the way the house is oriented. See, ours have solar panels. Yeah, I guess it depends and, on your orientation to the sun. Yeah, as much as I would like to have a front yard tree, uh, no. So they're all in the back and we yeah. have a shady backyard. So, so the other thing I have is um, just to let you know, um, the last week or so at night, there has been a small white vehicle running up Church Street at about 60 miles an hour. And this has been like two or three evenings in the last week. And when I say 60 miles an hour, I mean he starts at Water Street and he revs it. He's, he's, he's literally put, putting the, the pedal to the metal by the time he gets to my house. Um, to the point where it actually scared me that he was gonna hurt somebody coming up that road going that fast. So, um, just to, so I, I talked to Linda and I know she told me that they're considering putting some, um, finally getting maybe a, another police officer on um, to cover this. But I also wanted to um, state, I don't know if it would have, if it would help, but because I can't get a picture that quick, um, but we can certainly put a camera out and videotape some of these crazy speeders if if that would help can you report a speeder based on their tags i don't think so actually you can but you, you have to call the non-emergency number or 911 to report it first yeah well at, at 60 miles an hour up church street they're gone before i can i can the 15 minute phone call to non-emergency number just saying if you have their plate, though, I think is what Chief is saying. Yeah? But it's a repeat. The repeat takes you 15 minutes each. Yes. Yeah. So if you can get the tag number. OK. And then, like you mentioned, we are trying to um, hire additional officer to expand out coverage hours to the evening. Did you say it was the same same car, same time every day, yeah. Patty? It's, 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 or most it's days? like between 9 and 10. And he's coming from Water Street. I don't know which way he's coming into Water Street, but as soon as he hits Water Street and Church, he flies. And I mean, to scary speed, not just, you know, hey, I'm going 40. No, he was literally sounded like he was drag racing up Church Street. Also, I wanted to let you know, there's two kids on dirt bikes running around the neighborhood once in a while. Um, no tags, no lights, but they're running around on, uh, I saw them come down Church Street at least twice in the last month or so. Just letting you guys know what I see. Okay, any other comments? Yeah, Reverend, did you want to hop in? Yes, hi. Good evening, everyone. Reverend Kevin B. Montague from Providence St. John Baptist Church. Good um, evening, Reverend. God bless you. Thank you all so much for allowing me to come in to speak on behalf of Pastor Billy T. Staten Jr. Uh, he wanted me to share something that he wanted um, our church to play, well, to actually do. Um, he's interested, and we have a plot of land somewhere around our church that he wants to use to have uh, to create some type of urban garden for the community to come and to be able to plant whatever they want to plant. Uh, we don't have any specifics on that yet, but we think it would be a good touch to have um, the community be able to come and be a part of PSJBC and be able to plant and be able to just look at the different things that are growing out there. So uh, more information about that will come, but I just wanted to bring it to your your attention. I don't know if there's anything we need to do to make this official or to, to so that we're able to do it, or I don't know, but um, just giving you a heads up that this is something that we have, um, that we would like to do. It, you know, this is a good time. 
that you can have a community come together, um, mm -hmm. even in a social distance world, to be able to plant flowers or whatever, um, shrubberies or whatever, um, so that people can stop by and say, wow, that's beautiful. So that's, that's where we are right That's such a great idea. Um, you. As you it were is. saying it, I was thinking maybe um, our green team can coordinate and try to work with you guys. And I don't think anything needs to be done, but if you want us to see if, I think we only have like two or three members, but maybe someone would be able okay. to. Well, if I'm not mistaken, one of your members is a master gardener. Um, I believe so. I believe one of our yeah. deacons um, is, a, is a master gardener. Yeah. Oh. They want to be on our green team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So thank you all for allowing me to um, share. And um, we, we'll, we'll, I guess, I'll talk to Kyle or Sarah to talk about to uh, see who's on a green team and maybe have a, a meeting to see where do we go from here? How do we actually make this a reality? Right. Sounds like a field trip could be in order to go. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Instead of sitting on Zoom. Right. Yeah. Now that's warmer. So I think I can we can definitely work and maybe get that set up, Commissioner Frank. Okay. Great. Good Thank you. Me. Thank you. I have a green. I, I have. I don't have a green thumb, but I could see one in the future. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working this, on this, right? <laughs> with this partnership. If I can see it. This All right. Well, we accept everybody, even those that have a almost green thumb. Hey, <laughs> one day, one day you can have a green thumb. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else? Hearing none, I would like to call this meeting adjourned. I have 8.52. Correct. And good night, everybody. Have a lovely rest of your evening. And we will see each other again in two weeks at the work session. Excellent. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.